Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, our first hour today. We have one of my favorite guests, Professor James McCanny. And, of course, the burning questions that we have uh, here is, number one, we have some major comets that are passing through this year. NASA has dig- designated this year as the year of the comet. We have the uh, J-STARS, the uh, uh, Lemon Comet, that have passed through. Uh, there's some indication that they may have triggered off some uh, coronal solar mass uh, ejections that did have effects on the Earth. But the big one is coming up uh, this fall in November, the Ison Comet. Uh, this is, uh, there's some anomalies that appear to be mistruths being put forward that maybe it's a lot larger and it's going to produce a much bigger solar storm and the action at a distance may have some serious effects on the planet. Um, and the second question, of course, is how does this tie in with the theory about Planet X? Uh, so, Professor McCanny, let's uh, roll and get your analysis on this, these key questions. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the question about Planet X, and let me uh, clarify that. There's, there is so much misinformation floating around the Internet right now. Uh, a lot of it is government-sponsored, the little one. Yeah, and some of them will try to misquote you. Some of them will try to misquote you as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, uh, in fact, the last time I was on, there was probably about 10 efforts to misquote me. Uh, but let's, let's look at what Planet X really is. Is there one Planet X? No, there are many, many Planet Xs. Um, the Planet X type of objects, do they all come by and devastate Earth and send us back to the cave ages? No. Are they all massive, the size of what the biblical reference to Wormwood? Uh, no, they're not all that big. Um, many are rather small. A planet X is simply refers to, and it's an astronomical term, it simply refers to an object that has not been named yet. But it, the, the kind of from the year 2000 on, it's come to represent something that's supposed to be in the solar system and coming by Earth. Uh, let's just imagine that there was, uh, let's take a hypothetical case. Let me make a big, all capital words, hypothetical. Say that uh, 10,000 years ago, a big object came through the solar system. It would have formed a big comet, the plasma discharge comet model at work. It comes by and does some damage to Earth. Okay, now this object, let's say, has a 12,000-year orbit. And uh, in 2,000 years, it will come back through the solar system. There's no guarantee that that will even come anywhere close to Earth. You see what I mean? The, yeah. the issue of Planet X, will it return? Well, it's almost a moot point because will it return and come close to Earth and do damage? These can come close to the sun, send out solar flares, but three-dimensional space is a big area. Will the solar flare come in uh, close to Earth and do any damage there again? Uh, the, the predicting that is almost impossible because we've seen before that the solar flares uh, can come out uh, uh, diagonally or almost, almost sideways to the position of the comet coming by the sun. So uh, making these predictions is difficult. Uh, is Let's take another question that's been bounced around. Is comet ice on being followed by Planet X. Well, no, there's no indication that it is. Is Comet Ice on Planet X? Well, for the people who want to talk about the Planet X, the only Planet X in the, in the universe, um, no, it's not what you'd call Wormwood. It's coming in from the north, uh, not even the north. It's coming in uh, almost uh, diagonally uh, uh, along the ecliptic. Uh, yeah. So it, it doesn't fit the bill for what traditionally has been called a planet X object. So right. anyway, the, just with that little bit of explanation, uh, could comet Iceland cause some problems? We co- talked before about uh, well, first of all, it's going to come by Mars next March or next uh, October first, very close, and I I think. NASA, when we talked last, uh, I think this whole issue with Comet Lemon clouding the skies over the entire U.S. and other continents for a period of about three and a half weeks uh, was a weather control, uh, what would you call it, preparation for when Comet Ison is coming by Mars so nobody can see it from Earth, so amateurs cannot see it. 
And why would you think uh, they would want to do that? It'd be, is it because they want to use it as an excuse for power outages that will actually be artificially uh, done and use the excuse that the comet comes by? Or, you know, what's the well, logic behind well, that? Well, this is just coming by Mars, so it's not something that's going to directly affect Earth at that time. But what yeah. people could do is get up in the morning sky, the, uh, in the morning early, a truck driver driving across the country takes his cell phone, takes a picture of the comet, uh, leashing, lashing out at Mars, something that has not been observed by humans in 3,000 years or more. So uh, yeah. a comet coming next to an inner solar system planet. Uh, so in, in that sense, um, uh, there's a lot of confusion. Venus is a new planet. Let's take a look at that. Uh, I had to laugh. Uh, I got some emails this past week. Apparently, my name came up on the, uh, the crazy lady talks to alien uh, Planet X has been here since 2003 and uh, was trying to slam me a little bit, which is rather humorous. Uh, but this person says that Planet X has been around, hidden inside the orbit of Venus since 2003. Now, <laughs> You know, I mean, the absurdities that are flying around the Internet is just yeah. kind of absurd. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and of course, uh, we, 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 the real danger, though, comes from comets that could create the CME that could strike the Earth. Uh, and uh, I know from my contacts with uh, the World Constitution Parliament Association founder, uh, uh, Professor Isley, who is the founder of the Vitamin College, is an uh, astrophysicist, uh, found the organization in 1958. He, sh he shared with me the fact that they're concerned about CMEs triggered off by the sun. Your theory about the plasma universe, the electric universe, uh, completely explains that comets, their primary and most dangerous thing is the action at a distance and the danger of triggering off solar superstorms. If they are Earth-directed or glancing uh, blows on the Earth, they could seriously affect earthquakes, volcanism, and destruction of the ozone layer. Ultraviolet strobing of the Earth can destroy crops, uh, and the danger of knocking out our satellites and our ground-based uh, power transmission lines like the Carrington event, which could easily happen again. A Carrington event that happened today would crash our civilization. Yeah, well, the, the issues with these are uh, actually small comets just passing by the sun. If one uh, came by just uh, properly, we could have a CME event that would come out directly at Earth. And uh, it wouldn't be Planet X, so to speak, at least no. a little comet that everything just happened to fall into place. So, exactly. Um, yeah. uh, you just happened to be in the wrong place at the bigger. wrong time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's no Absolutely. evidence of, of a large uh, red or, or brown dwarf star in the inner solar system or any evidence that's coming in, although they've been looking at perturbations of uh, the planets for you know, over a century, going back to Tycho Brahe, the... The astronomer, so uh, yeah, and the, 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 there are, there are these possibilities, but the, the poor public out there is just getting slammed with ridiculous misinformation. But it's very much on purpose. Uh, yeah, and why, did, why is it on purpose? What what's the reason for it? Is it because the globalists are concerned that there's something going to happen that they their science scientists have more or better information that are concerned about it, and they don't want the public to know about the danger? Well, yeah, it's, it's something that is some, it's something that people would look up and understand that the the people in charge, the bankers, the loans, the the, the energy uh, consortiums don't have any power over this, and as, and that would be the first thing that people would realize. And then, what if that thing comes closer to Earth? If if say the public wakes up in mid September start to see a comet in the early morning sky interacting with Mars, how long do you think it's going to figure out that that could do the same thing here? Exactly, yeah. So in other words, uh, these uh, comets can dramatically affect the Earth, and that's all we need to know. They can trigger off CMEs and action at a distance that can be cataclysmic. Back in a moment with Professor James McKenney. So to 
to clarify, if there are people out there that are grabbing uh, parts of this show or any other show, or my show in particular, without my authorization and trying to make statements about Planet X, please stop it. Uh, because when you take things out of context, you confuse people, or you make misstatements and try to say that we said something we didn't. What we do know is that there are space weather factors. We talked about this yesterday with Stan Dale that uh, it's his opinion that we passed through the galactic plane two million years ago. I've heard alternative information that we actually are transitioning through it now uh, and saw actually have some research articles I pulled up on that. And it takes about 30 years to pass through it. Uh, do you, what, what's your opinion on that? Are we in a transition through the galactic plane or did we pass through two million years ago? Well, yeah, there again, it's hard to define what I would call the galactic plane just because uh, most of the galaxy we can't see. It's kind of a smudge in the sky. So right. uh, exactly where is the plane, and, and more so than that, uh, if uh, it, it would be dealing with, like, electrical conditions or other, say, electrical currents, just like the solar system. And these right. don't necessarily go in, like, a nice fine line. They're broad. They might be, you know, a couple light years wide. So... Um, yeah, uh, well, what I what I dug up in my research is some actual articles that suggested that we have been transitioning through the galactic plane for about 15 years, that uh, 15 to 20 years, and that we'll continue doing so for another 15 to 20 years, and that the uh, torsion field, which is of course the fifth dimensional torsion field, is different, so that there is an increase in gamma background gamma radiation and cosmic background radiation that's present as we're passing it. And it's also a debris field, so there's a 30 times increased risk of an impact with an object like a comet or an asteroid because the, or a rogue planet like we mentioned, multiple planet X's or large objects. <clears throat> so that, uh, but that's what I was able to dig up is from, from my sources is that there, in fact, we're, we are traveling through an area of space that's more energetic, uh, has higher background radiation levels, which um, we pass through, I think it's, I'm not trying to figure out how many million years it happens, but it's, it's not very frequent. Uh, and um, it combined with other cycles, and apparently what it is is the arm of the galaxy rises and falls like a carousel through the galactic plane every so many million years, and that we're in that process of doing that now. Uh, have you heard any evidence to that effect? Well, uh, there again, uh, yeah, making measurements is difficult. We don't have any equipment out there, really. Uh, in the mid-90s, I was working with some scientists from Russia, and they had some ways of remotely detecting some activity out at the, in, the, in the galaxy, and then a lot of these are secondary or tertiary effects that people are uh, measuring, and then they're making estimates of what might be going on out there, but... Uh, until we get good instrumentation out there and can get consistent measurements, uh, it's going to be almost a guessing game. But uh, uh, the, most of the 99.999% of all of our weather is very local, uh, and it's uh, it's very much directed by the sun and the sun's electric the electric conditions of the sun. I just saw a, a almost humorous statement. I get the uh, American Geophysical Union, I get some newsletters from them, and this this issue, they started admitting that electrical conditions in outer space are related to our weather, and of course this is something I've been dealing with my whole career. But yeah, exactly. They're finally long. trying to they're trying to pretend maybe that they appropriated this idea, and it's new and now when you've had it up for, what, 30 years or so? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's but it's, uh, what are these people thinking? Clearly, they all listen to my show. They're in the back room. They would never want to admit it. But, uh, uh, you know, the, the public knows about this. Clearly, uh, these scientists know about this. It's, so, it's, like I say, it's rather humorous to see these announcements coming out, kind of leaking out in these little publications that they would think uh, possibly nobody notices. But, uh, well, there's a couple of principles I've noticed that I'm learning from you. One is planetary alignment can have uh, interstellar plasma activity that can trigger off earthquakes, volcanoes, and a change in the ionosphere that can change weather. Uh, would that statement be correct? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. that the uh, Interplanetary alignments, like alignment of Earth, oh. Jupiter, and Saturn, uh, can yeah. change the plasma activity of the upper ionosphere and trigger off earthquakes and volcanoes because... 
basically um, earthquakes, believe it or not, are a plasma event. When you charge up the tectonic plate, you reach a piezoelectric slip threshold, and finally the energy is released. Uh, when the mu or resistance between the, the surfaces of the tectonic plate uh, drop, at least temporarily, to release the, uh, the recoil in the rock surfaces, especially near the surface. And so uh, volcanism and earthquakes and weather changes, that's how the harp works. They're actually putting in harmonic frequencies uh, by pumping in energy over the te tectonic plate at specific harmonics. And once they reach enough energy pumped in there, the resistance drops and mu drops temporarily, and the rocks release re energy. Um, that's what I was told when I took care of pilots flying uh, in the classified projects they were working on weather modification at uh, Shriver Air Force Base in Colorado. Uh, well, yeah, this past uh, about four or five weeks, we've had very strange weather uh, in the United States all around the world. Uh, and basically, I was looking for the energy source. Weather just does not happen by itself. It doesn't just decide right. to do things. It's not an eddy effect of a of a uh, overzealous um, uh, jet stream. It's, right. it's actually caused by energy sources. And so I was looking, and in in the, what I discovered this time, we were connected all the way out to Saturn. We were connected out to the um, uh, electrical connection of Saturn makes with the sun. And that's a very long way. So uh, it, we just passed that April 28th was the basically the conjunction of Earth with Saturn. And so that's why we're still getting some funny weather around Earth here. People are talking about winds and, and of course, all these storms, the, the snow that we've gotten uh, as a result of a lot of uh, water being picked up in the Pacific. It's brought up to the Arctic Circle, and then it comes down and uh, develops into these huge snowstorms we've been having. So, uh, you know, those alignments are very real, something, uh, you know, that I've uh, dealt with and was able to make some uh, significant long-term predictions that came through regarding uh, severe activity, uh, weather activity. But, yeah, those are very real. The, the, now you've the had factor. contact with Tier, tier 1 scientists. But, uh, why do you think the government is so remiss to tell the public what's really going on? Because the level, it may not be absolute, but the level of information and access to measuring technologies for Tier 1 scientists is far beyond the Tier 2, which are at the university tenured professor level. And as a result, the public's left in the dark that the danger of space weather can cause some pretty significant effects on crops, on earthquakes and volcanoes. And like Stan Dale was talking about, it also interferes with their ability to predict these things because if you can predict that the CME is going to happen, or an earthquake is going to happen, you can get out of the way, you can start doing emergency preparation in advance of it, uh, and none of this science is trickling down to the public to protect the public uh, from danger. It's pretty disturbing to hear this. Well, yeah, but that, that's the point. The point is that the public is not in the, in the uh, direct line of information. Back in a moment with Professor McKinney. Yeah, it's uh, disturbing because... Welcome back, and um, so to, to clarify, so people will have a clear understanding, uh, there's a danger period this November when the comet ISON, uh, which is discovered by the ISON agency in Russia, uh, passes. It's fairly a large comet, according to what you're saying, Dr. McK Professor McKinney, that this comet may be as large as 2,600 kilometers, although the reporting at NASA appears to be anomalously much smaller. Uh, we also have the danger next October 2014. These comets can, as harbingers of danger, have been known for many centuries that they can cause great havoc on the Earth. They affect at a distance the ionosphere, they can affect earthquakes, volcanoes, volcanism, and they can trigger off extreme weather. Uh, plus, if they trigger off a CME, it can have effects like the Carrington event, and that kind of event today would be very cataclysmic. And um, I think that we're at risk of that happening this fall, I can't guarantee it because it has to be aimed at Earth and we don't know if the position of the comet and the storm will actually, when it happens, because it will be a sun grazer, 700,000 kilometers off the surface of the sun, if it's, if it's uh, sun or Earth directed even at a glancing angle, 
we're going to have problems, especially in the southern hemisphere. We could have UV strobing, which will destroy crops. We could have loss of satellites and loss of ground-based uh, power generation. And it's obvious to me that there's something that's brewing in the next few years that the globalists are in a panic about to try to control the public. Uh, which is why the gun, you know, the, the, blo the blocking of gun activity, the buying up of all the bullets, there's something that they're in a panic over. And I can't say if it's this or something else, but the, the general thesis is if you look at the model, uh, I would say uh, there's a very good chance that we're going to have some problems this fall and next year perhaps. And it may be not just one event, it could be a series of super sunstorms triggered off by this uh, first passage of ISON that might uh, have some pretty serious effects in terms of at least inducing famine and knocking out some of the power grids, especially in the southern hemisphere. Well, uh, the, uh, the, the possibilities are there. The, the issue with ISON will be from around um, October, uh, mid-October, when it starts moving into the inner solar system, it has an alignment with uh, a very good electrical alignment right up behind the planet Mercury. I would say that's when things are going to start to ha happen in terms of the active solar system. And so uh, that's, that's what I would estimate as a, a time when we could start to see some issues. Yeah, we want to have people, if they have any questions, you're going to be here for just a few more minutes in this segment, and then we'll open lines up, 800-259-5791. Uh, you'll be back uh, perhaps in the next week or two to continue this dialogue. But I want to, to dismiss anybody who's misquoting you. Uh, uh, space weather is really important, and you're probably the top scientist uh, putting forth the theory of the plasma and electric universe. <clears throat> the, uh, the fact is that... Uh, when the sun rings the earth like a bell with coronal mass ejection that triggers off earthquakes and volcanism, that the ionosphere is directly affected by interplanetary plasma discharges across interstellar space that can actually trigger off major changes in weather. Some of our weird weather right now is due to these alignments you mentioned with Saturn. Um, uh, and it's interesting, it might even tie in with some of the things in terms of astrology where planetary alignments and uh, uh, basically, if you want to call it... Uh, Space weather biogeometry might actually trigger off changes in terms of crops, human behavior, and other activities because, of course, plasma must affect life forms as well as the weather, too. So uh, it yeah. could be that there's some basis behind that. Well, astrology, when in the mid-'90s, I was working with some Russian scientists on atmospheric conditions, and some of the psychologists at the same university started... Um, using my work to determine um, uh, effects and they were measuring this is a uh, they were measuring the effects of planetary alignments on unborn babies that were still in the mother's womb and they were making measurements with electrodes attached to the mother's stomach and the babies would respond uh, to planetary alignments and other what we would call astrological uh, alignments and so what they realized is that's why the birth the point of birth was very important in astrology because that's when all the other senses kicked in and kind of overrode the all of these uh, planetary connections that were going on prior to those senses kicking in uh, the sight sound smell all of those being rather uh, dormant when the baby before the baby was born some people keep these connections much more than other people some people they are there but they don't know it so there's a real scientific basis for astrology which is very interesting and it's connected to the electrical connections of the planets moons etc have you worked on some mathematical formulae or a model where people can plug numbers into and get some idea of extreme weather? For example, one of the things that I see coming this year is uh, intuitively I see tremendous uh, extreme weather and a lot of tornadic activity and increase in earthquakes and volcanism uh, after a period that's been relatively quiet the first part of the year. Uh, and uh, these extreme weather, of course, and the possibility of UV strobing in the fall with the ice on, uh, I would say that we're staring down the barrel of major famine. We've already had problems with crop failures because of the fluctuating weather patterns and drought, and now 
It seems that the final common pathway of all the weather modification is to induce famine. Well, uh, after this late winter, and uh, all of a sudden we're cast into some very dry weather. Uh, so we have a lot of water, say, in the rivers and lakes, but the land is drying out in, in their infinite stupidity. The leaders of the country and the world are more interested in fighting wars than in taking care of real issues like, like saving water and water, water management, uh, say, taking all this water that's coming down the Mississippi River right now and putting it into reservoirs where it can be uh, fed out to the farms in times of lack of rain. You know, instead of that, what are the farmers doing? They're spraying fields with aquifer water from under the ground, uh, which they're depleting at a tremendous rate. So, uh, you know, our politicians are just, you know, they're, they're up there saying we're going to do uh, whatever they're going to do, and it has nothing to do with what they should be doing. The real major issues of the world are going uh, without even being talked about. I think part of the problem is we have a diseducated public that's been given the wrong scientific uh, basis. Uh, we have uneducated people that are basically politicians rather than real leaders making decisions on things, and they're uh, they're putting money, for example, the carbon garbage over the idea that we have to reduce world carbon dioxide or, or to save the planet, and we're being seeing it pushed by July or Gillard in Australia and by Obama here misdirecting trillions of dollars of money to things that basically are going to do nothing if anything they're going to cause harm to the level of oxygen on the planet and the ability to raise crops because you need co2 for plants to grow and what i see is craziness i see stupid ideas being put forward for uh, yes we have a caller your name and where you're calling from uh yes hi dr this is glenn from philly oh yes okay go ahead with your question for professor mckinney uh, yeah, through uh, kind of Professor McCanny and and yourself as well, kind of uh, you know looking at this, focusing on you know ISON as being the you know greater concern at the moment versus about a year ago when all eyes you know including yours, uh, Doctor Bill were like shifted towards this dwarf star supposedly coming in from the outer part of the solar system from the south, and how it would imminently be visible mm -hmm. by August to you know astronomers in Australia and such. And then, like, that just seems to have evaporated now? Is that the deal, or what? What do you think, to Professor McCanny? Because I know that the people in the, in the South Pole Observatory have been watching uh, for the approach of a, uh, of a dwarf star in that area. It, do you have any evidence that you have that uh, this is still being watched, or what's going on there? Yeah, I, I uh, never had any positive identification, what I would call orbital positive identification of any object. Uh, coming in from the south, other than uh, those are the indications from a number of sources, but there's no data that says there's something imminently moving in to the solar yeah. system. Uh, stay there, Glenn. Uh, Professor McCann is going to be uh, heading out. I will uh, we'll expand on that topic when we come back. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. You raised a good question there, Glenn. Um, we have uh, basically more than one object. As, as Professor McKenney says, there's a number of, quote, Planet X objects in space. Uh, you recall we mentioned uh, on previous shows that Tycho Brahe, the Danish uh, astronomer over 100 years ago, saw perturbations of the outer planets indicating that it might be due to a, a approaching unknown planet in, in deep space. Uh, you heard about that, right? Yes, yeah, I'm, yep, I remember that. So you've been probably researching this yourself. Uh, I'll give you my analysis, which, you know, is a little bit of additional information from what Professor McCanny mentioned, but what do you think? Uh, oh, no, I can't say I've been researching it. I'm just a Patriot radio listener who listens to a variety of programs, and I just know that everybody had different guests coming on, and the emphasis was... Um, you know, on a dwarf star up beyond the, ver uh, the, the uh, orbit of Jupiter, coming in from the south, due to be imminently visible to amateur astronomers Ooh. in the southern. We had uh, <clears throat> we we did a, a show last night 
on Revelation News Radio, and we had a it's just a short area where Stan Dale talked about a deep space object coming in with a periodicity of 3,611 years. And he's worked out the orbital pattern. <clears throat> if you actually want to check with Stan Dale's website, standale.com. I personally believe we have two issues going on. We have comets coming in, um, probably being pushed in from the Oort cloud. Uh-huh. And we do also have an object coming in. I can't tell you when it's going to arrive in here, but uh, I've had contacts over a number of years now that have been watching it from the South Pole Telescope, the IRAS, the uh, Chandra X-ray Telescope, the Deep Space Pioneer 10, going back to the 70s, etc., looking for this uh, dwarf star. Um, it doesn't even need to get into the inner solar system to do uh, quite a bit of damage because it can push comets in. Uh, if it does approach the inner solar system, it will be pretty evident because it will have pretty significant effects on not only heating of the planets because of its uh, action at a distance, but also uh, as it, if it passes into the inner solar system, the level of solar activity will be unprecedented. So um, <clears throat> I think there is still something. I still think there is something coming in, but I think the immediate danger is comets. Comet I saw in the one next year. Uh, if this object is coming in, which I have, you know, my regular and classified sources, uh, there is something that they're, they're watching out in space, and it probably has a periodicity, as Sandale says, around 3,611 years, which would place it at the time when it passed or came in, within a distance of the inner solar system to trigger off major volcanism, such as the explosion at Thera that destroyed Aquatiri. Uh, the uh, capital of uh, Santorini, the island of Santorini, uh, and blew the island up. That uh, volcanic explosion was so great, it created a tsunami that destroyed the Minoan civilization, probably the most advanced civilization at the time. It also caused magma and uh, uh, <coughs> material to fall literally a thousand miles away in Egypt, because that was the trajectory of the of fallout that was one of the factors that precipitated the plagues of the uh, time at Moses. Those were environmental plagues. And if you actually look at the environment and which things proceeded at one after the other, including telluric currents driving uh, animals out from the ground <clears throat> and the, the various plagues of, of flies, etc., they all fit with the fact that there was a change in the tectonics and the plasma physics and the telluric currents of the earth, uh, and I believe that the fall of the second kingdom was something that God had foreknowledge and told Moses when the plagues would come, and that this would be a sign uh, to the Pharaoh to let the people go. So I think that there's a link there. Uh, I can't tell I, you I, when I, it's going to happen. Want to make those events too, I want, want to make those events too natural, uh, because I definitely believe there have to be uh, uh, given the precision of God and uh, you know of the events, such as the uh, Israelites passing through the Red Sea, and then the, you know the waters inundating the Egyptians. Oh no, there, there, there can be a combination of uh, yes. there can be a combination of natural uh, omniscience. Remember now, <coughs> God's power is not just uh, displayed by by, <coughs> by superseding natural law but right, by right. actually uh, obviating the natural law. So you can have both omniscience where he knows where right. the land bridge is and then sets up walls of ice water by, by things that cause the, uh, the winds to blow and actually freeze the walls of water because there were frozen walls of water on either side. And then the walls of frozen water broke at the time the Egyptians crossed to follow them. So, um, But the omniscience of God, uh, to know from the beginning of the universe that these things would happen, is in some ways even more amazing then uh, God intervening and actually changing the physical laws at the time, isn't it? Right. I, I, yeah. Either way, it certainly um, involves his transcendent and omniscient yeah. omniscience. Yeah. No, no, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, but but I think we have both. I think what we have to also we talked about this last night. Uh, it's the research I've done suggests that we are passing through the galactic plane. Although Stan Dale's opinion is we passed two million years ago, but we're getting passing through a a gamma uh, a- energy jet that's coming out of the center of the galaxy. Uh, I've actually dug up papers, scientific papers, indicate that we have been passing through the galactic plane and that as we pass through it, we change what's called the uh, orientation of the torsion field, can change the plasma physics of the stars and the Earth, which can uh, increase volcanism earthquakes. That's why we're seeing virtually all of the planets are having changes in their uh, their poles. Uh, we're seeing major changes on, on virtually every planet that's being observed from space, from Jupiter to Saturn, etc., and we're seeing an increased number of impacts from large uh, comets and asteroids, which indicates we're in a debris field 
which also is predicted when you pass through the galactic plane. That the research articles I pulled up is that it's 30 times more likely. Chances on any given day of a major impact of a comet are 1 in 22,000 uh, on the planet Earth. And that's increased by 30 times uh, likelihood in the past 15 to 20 years and the next 15 to 20 years because of the passage. So well, I think we're part, seeing... Like, uh, I expect this to be like birth things increasing in frequency and intensity to the point that men's hearts will be failing them for fear of looking after those things that are coming upon the Earth. Yeah, and it, well, the evidence that I've been able to dig up, including uh, deep space photographs from South, uh, from the Southern Hemisphere, etc., I know there are some people that are they're making all kinds of predictions it's going to pass in a specific time. I don't know. All I can tell you is that it may well be a timed uh, supernaturally, just like the uh, ancient destruction that released the the uh, e- the, the Hebrews, both the uh, Ephraim and Judah, uh, the two houses from the slavery in Egypt, it may well be timed to the events that are going to soon happen in Israel. And what I see well, I, about I, I, to happen I mean, is right. in January, Obama promised the Palestinians that he was going to partition the state and the city and give East Jerusalem to uh, become the capital, Al-Quds, which right. in uh, Arabic means, uh, you know, Jerusalem, Al-Quds, which is why they call the Quds Force in, in Iran, which is called Jerusalem Force. That's what it is in, in Farsi. So I think we're very close to a peace treaty because we're right now we're seeing Israel attack in the last four days twice. We're seeing the widening war. We're seeing the danger of these 1-1-10 missiles that are being built in Iran that if Hezbollah gets a large number of them, they can literally blanket Israel, and there's nothing that Israel can do to stop because I don't believe their Iron Dome and their Green Pine radar systems can stop these missiles uh, effectively. They might stop right. a percentage, but if a percentage gets through, it will be basically they'll have to either depopulate well, the area or face uh, destruction. At some point, I think we're going to see some sort of substantive retribution against Israel, which then will result in the the destruction of Damascus. And then that would probably... Oh, yeah, I I think that that's going to happen, but I don't think that's going to happen right now. I don't think it's imminent. I think that, uh, that, you know, once... You take the cork off the bottle and you start a regional war where you have hypersonic cruise missiles striking our carrier group and your con hypersonic uh, torpedoes, underwater cav- super cavitation torpedoes hitting our carrier group, which are Russian missiles, and you have, um, you'll have the regional war become a global war almost instantaneously. You'll then be seeing uh, you know, Russian uh, you know, <laughs> submarines carrying enough throw weight to walk, wipe out every city in the United States, just one Russian submarine uh, parked off the coast by a few hundred miles and with a strike distance of, you know, anywhere from 18 to 24 minutes of any city. Uh, you know, we're, we're talking, uh, that's the reward, and that won't happen right away. Because I, think, I, I think Henry Groover's um, vision of America uh, being under thermal nuclear attack during a time of civil upheaval is very intriguing because um, I think it's possible that America could see civil war. Maybe one of the reasons that we see them, they want to, I'm sure they'd rather preserve the infrastructure, but if the good guys start to win, you know, in a civil uprising, they may just decide to forget about the infrastructure and nuke the cities. So. Well, what I see uh, coming is exactly, I t- spent some time with Henry talking about his visions, uh, and uh, he was actually describing the uh, Los Angeles freeways uh, with the cars all stopped from a, from an EMP and then missiles flying in, and uh, that's yet a future date. I think we have, uh, we're in the birth pangs now, and the peace treaty will probably be signed during the second term of Obama. Uh, sometime in the next... At that point, the man of sin will be revealed. Well, I think there's uh, there's three players on the part here. We have the false prophet being a false prophet of peace, i.e. Obama. We have the Vatican trying to marry Islamic religions to uh, Christianity, all the Abrahamic religions. And we have the beast dictator, i.e. Russia. Those are the major players. Amazing. Back in a moment. <laughs> 